Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith. Today I'm in my sister's room. She just graduated high school and she moved out. So we're gonna borrow her room for a little bit and we're gonna talk about I blink artifacts. Now this topic came up because I'm building my own EEG software called Ion. And in my software, I found that our eye blinks were actually upside down. Now, how could that be? How could that be? Here's a picture of them upside down. And I was thinking about it a lot. I was going through a bunch of EEGs and I was noticing this because we're working on removing eye blink artifacts specifically because we did muscle artifacts in the past, which we're really good at doing. Now we're moving on to eye blink artifacts and getting a working prototype that's high performance going. So I was looking through a bunch of EEGs to get some examples of eye blink artifacts and I found that they were upside down. Instead of looking like a V, they were looking like an N. So they're not looking correctly. So I was wondering, wh why is this? Why is this? Well, let's go back to the fundamentals of EEG and the fundamentals of eye blink artifacts in general. So where do eye blink artifacts come from? Well, first you have to understand that the eye, just like the brain, is electrically charged. So the front of the eye is positively charged and the back of the eye, the retina, is negatively charged. Now, when you blink your eye, when you close your eyes, your eyeball goes up. Your eyeball goes up. So your eyeball goes up and points towards these electrodes on your forehead, FP1 and FP2, your eyeball goes up when you blink just naturally and goes towards those electrodes. So these two electrodes will pick up the most of the eye blink artifact. Now, what is the actual, I guess, math behind why an eye blink artifact is shaped the way it is? Why is it shaped like a V shape and not like the N shape where I was seeing them on my software, why, why are they upside down? Well, let's take an example of FP1 to F3. Let's say you're doing a, bi a longitudinal bipolar montage. Uh, EEG shows the difference between two channels. So in this case, we're gonna be looking at FP1 minus F3. You're gonna see that on your EEG in the longitudinal bipolar montage or double banana montage as I like to call it. So. The FP1 is right here, right on the forehead. So that's gonna give you, let's say 100 microvolts. Just use easy numbers. And it's gonna be right here. And it's gonna be picked up by the eye movement going up while you blink. Now we have F3 is farther up. F3 is right here. And you're gonna get less of the electrical activity picked up. So let's say we only pick up 50 microvolts at F3 compared to FP1, which is right by the eyeball, which is gonna pick up, let's say, 100 micro microvolts, for example. So, if you do the math, 100 minus 50, super easy, guys. We're gonna get fifth, ooh, left hand is not working for me. 50, this marker's not working either. 100 microvolts minus 50 microvolts is 50 microvolts. Now, does 50 microvolts mean it goes 50 microvolts up or does it go 50 microvolts down? Now, the interesting thing about EEG is that when you have a positive number, when you get a positive number at the end, it's going to be actually a downward deflection. So our eye blink is gonna look something like, sorry, one hand, something like that. It's gonna look, it's gonna have a downward deflection at the eye blink time. So that's what it's gonna look like. But my eye blinks right now, or previously in our software, were looking like that. They were looking like that. So this is wrong. So how could this even happen, guys? How could this even happen? Well, when you're plotting an EEG graph, in the beginning, I was just plotting 50 microvolts, 50 microvolts up, the obvious thing to do, but, since I've been through EEG college, I realized, hey guys, actually 50 microvolts means this needs to be a downward deflection. So this is wrong and this is right. And the way to fix this to make 50 microvolts go 50 microvolts down is just to multiply everything by negative one while processing our EEG data. So it was a very easy fix, but I should have noticed it earlier. I honestly haven't been looking through enough EEGs, I guess. 
or specifically looking at eye blink artifacts. So I hope it makes more sense of eye blink artifacts, why they're shaped the way they are. So just to go over it again, so FP1 right here, it's gonna pick up the eye blink movement. When you close your eyes, blink your eyes, your eye automatically goes up, points up towards this electrode. So you're gonna get a high number here in microvolts. And then that's gonna be compared to an electrode like for let's say F3 and the longitudinal bipolar montage or double banana montage it's gonna be a little bit less because it's farther away. F3 is gonna be farther away than FP1. FP1 is gonna pick up the most, the highest number. F3 is gonna pick up a little bit lower of a number. 100 minus 50 gives you a positive number of 50 microvolts. And if you have a positive number, you know on an EEG that equals a downward deflection. Now, if you had, if let's say we had negative 50 microvolts for some reason, then it would be an upward deflection. So that's just the basics of EEG, eye blink artifacts. And I'm so glad I realized this while building our software ION because that would have been a major oversight. But we're many, many months away from um, submitting our software for FDA clearance. And since I'm an EEG technologist registered, board registered, I can find these little little mistakes or bugs, whatever you want to call them, before I even present it to, to the FDA, which means I'm going to fix everything or as much things as possible before the FDA even sees it. And then hopefully it'll be a smooth process, get my software eye on FDA cleared, and then bring it to market so you guys can use it as well. And this is one of the fundamental concepts that every EEG tech should know. If you're taking your board exam, some people ask me, Jared, how much math do you have to do in EEG? Well, you just have to be able to subtract basic negative and positive numbers. So practice that. And you ought to know um, percentages, 10%, 20%. Be able to take 10% of a number, 20% of a number. And other than that, you'll be good. The 10% and 20% is for measuring for the International 1020 system. So you know where to make all the marks on the head. And this is honestly more like a school thing. So you can know the reason behind the shape of the EEG waveforms in general. Why is this a downward deflection? Well, you're comparing FP1 to F3. FP1 picks up the most activity from an eye blank. F3 is a little farther away, so it'll pick up a little less. 100 minus 50 is 50. And then positive numbers go down. Negative numbers go up. I don't know why they made it this way. Maybe I should know, but it's a pretty interesting thing. And this is just a little... Uh, little lesson on EEG eye blink artifacts. So we're working on a great eye blink artifact removal feature. I'll show it to you guys sometime in the future. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps out a lot if you learned something. Uh, that's all I need, just a like. And um, comment down below what other videos should I make. I'll try to make it for you guys. And I hope this was helpful. And a little interesting story about how on my software the eye blinks were upside down and I had to fix them from going back to the fundamentals, guys. Can never go wrong going back to the fundamentals. Whenever anything goes wrong, check your fundamentals and then you'll get a good answer. So I'll see you guys on the next video. See you around.